Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to give my case for the top two relics inside of Slay the Spire. The Shuriken allows you to gain one strength every time you attack three times in a single turn, and yes, it can be more than that in a single turn, and strength increases the damage of all your attacks by one. The reason why I consider this to be so strong, especially for the Silent, is that this applies to all of your attacks. It's permanent, so it lasts until the fight is over. And strength is hard to come by, but just increasing your damage by one is about a 15% boost on all of your strike attacks. So here I'd like to showcase this fight against the champ, who is one of the bosses you can run into on the second wave of a Slay the Spire run. Um, now the champ has a lot of HP, and I'm currently playing a fast attacking build that gets a lot of attacks in one turn. Shivs tend to be pretty good, it's actually one of the better ways for winning as the Silent. But you can see how I was able to stack up two strength on the first turn, and now as time goes on, it's going to become more and more strength. Other relics might do something like at the start of a fight you gain one strength flat, but you can see how since the shuriken stacks up over time, it's very very useful against boss fights. If you have the right deck for it, you can easily get three, four, maybe even five strength against some bosses, which is way more than the one you would have gotten. Uh, with one of those more common ballots. Now strength is so important in the game that in order to beat a lot of bosses you actually need enough damage to win. Playing a strategy where you play completely defensive can be okay, but generally I found that I get better results when I can actually finish a boss off before he stacks too many debuffs on me. Uh, take for instance if you get your deck filled with something like burn, where every time you draw a burn you not only have a wasted card draw, but you're also going to take damage, eventually that will be a problem for you and you will eventually lose against a boss. So almost every boss has some kind of time limit built into the nature of how you win, and bosses are usually where you're going to wipe in a match. So if you want to actually win, you want to beat the bosses, so you want to have a lot of strength. The only exception I can really see for this is if you were going with a poison based build because strength obviously isn't going to affect the poison there. Uh, but because poison requires you to have so many specific cards, obviously they all have to be poison cards, and the more poison cards you have the better they stack. Um, you, your build can completely fall flat on its face though, because if you miss some of those key cards, like having enough deadly poisons to make your catalyst work, deadly poison adds poison to the guy, catalyst doubles or triples the poison effect on it, uh, then what will happen is your build will just end up being too weak, so it's not actually that high of a success rate build. So jumping ahead a bit, this turn I'm drawing a pretty defensive hand honestly. Three of the six cards in the hand were completely defensive, and then the other three cards do damage but have no draw, yet I was able to easily do about 60 damage in that turn no problem whatsoever. Considering that by the end of the fight I had 8 strength stacked up from that one shuriken, it would have been more like 20, maybe 25 damage if I didn't actually have that item. So that proves shuriken is absolutely insane. Next up, the second absolutely awesome relic is the thread and needle. The thread and needle gives you 5 plated armor, and how plated armor works is at the end of every turn you gain the amount of plated armor in free block for that turn. So having the threaded needle gives you 5 plated armor, which means you get 5 block every single turn that you have that item. The only way that block can go away is if you take damage on a turn. Every time the damage actually goes through your armor, it reduces the block by 1 for that combat. Now I want to point out two things here. One, it's actually very difficult to have damage go through that plated armor block if you have the plated armor, because that's five extra armor every turn. If you play one or two block cards in addition to that, even strong attacks probably aren't going to go through your armor. Secondly, because it has five plated armor, even after you take one or two hits, it's still going to be doing a lot of work for you. Four extra armor a turn is really good, three extra armor a turn is really good. So where this item is going to really excel is that on normal fights, you're probably not going to take much if any damage. And what that allows you to do is to skip rest shrines more often, or when you go to a rest shrine, you can upgrade a card instead. So rather than needing to spend those valuable resources, 
on healing up, you can instead make your power increase as the game goes on, which is going to be really important as you get to the third stage and the enemies become a lot harder. So here's another fight where the strength of the Valak can really be put into practice. So you can see that I'm starting the fight with about 16 health and I'm bumping it up to 20. But the idea here is that this is a pretty tough enemy that would normally do some damage to you. At 20 life you might even be in danger of dying, but I'm able to play very riskily because of the thread and needle. And it's not only relevant inside the fight, but also because of you being able to play so risky, you're also able to go to the question mark events and do things like sacrifice a lot of your HP in order to gain massive benefits like extra relics, extra cards in your deck, or gold. So to kind of wrap everything in one context of how strong the thread and needle is, it basically gives you easy mode for the game because you're going to take so little damage that you're rarely in risk of dying, you're going to be able to get so much more power because you're never taking damage in those fights, and when you do finally get to the final boss, it's still going to be a great asset blocking a lot of the damage you would otherwise have taken. Comparing its strength to other items which might increase your max HP but do nothing to actually block damage. The Thread and Needle is way further ahead in terms of power, and as long as you keep that plated armor up by playing a couple blocks when you need to, your run is going to be just fine. In fact, I think this was the actual run where I took down the final boss, mostly because of just how strong the Thread and Needle is. I didn't even need the Shuriken, which I previously told you guys about being the other incredibly strong relic in this game. Having either of those gives you a huge advantage in Slay the Spire. So that's going to be it for my quick review of the top two relics inside of Slay the Spire. I hope you guys give it a shot the next time you see it inside of the game. Let me know in the comments how you perform when you have the Thread and Needle or the Shuriken. I'm sure you guys did just fine. And I'll see you guys in my future video content.